Wall of Vlogs, episode 113. Your boy is Mizzle with Mac out here in Dallas, Texas with my man Maurice Farnby and Knockbar Force Macho, Mac's brother. Batman couldn't be with me right now because he couldn't get on the plane, but his brother's going to be the perfect standing. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on the notifications bell so y'all don't miss a beat on all the dope content that I'm dropping. And y'all stay tuned because it's a dope, dope episode. I know you're going to enjoy it. Peace. Mizzo, Skylight. Let's make a play, 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 play. Ballin' every day. Mario Spumby. I got my boy Art Bark Forest Mancho here with me. Uh, owner of DFW Dog Life, located right here in Dallas, Texas. Being out there in the country, it was real more more laid back. Um, my dad was breeding when I was younger. Um, he had about close to six to seven dogs. Um, I really wanted to be a little bit different than he was and kind of elevate what I learned from him. Um, his dogs were much more aggressive. They weren't socialized as much. Um, I mean, we, I could barely even go outside with those dogs. A lot of my friends was living inside the city limits. So they weren't in the, you know, the environments that I was living in. Like I said, I mean, I had cows around me, horses around me. So I was outside pretty much all day long, um, just following him around, learning from him. Um, I really wouldn't want to go back, but I am grateful for the experiences that I was able to learn. Um, I think you're able to learn a lot more living out in the country as a young kid. What was that one route all of that you gravitated towards out of your father's kennel back in the day that like, you really was like, okay, there's something about this dog right here that made me more intrigued about the breed? Um, I have to say Diesel. Um, he was huge at the time, and I mean, if I said today, I would see, I've seen dogs bigger than he was, but as a, you know, 10 year old kid, I mean, he was almost like a dinosaur in my eyes. That was the biggest dog I have ever seen. So I would definitely say him. Um, I think it was intriguing to me also how big he was, but how he could also be gentle as well. Like I said, my dad's dogs were more on the aggressive side, but he was that one dog that my dad could trust him, you know, with the, me and my brother, we could go out there. Um, he would definitely let you know if anybody else was out there, but he was gentle enough to, you know, that me and my brother could be out there with him. Junior high, almost high school, my dad actually sold all the dogs. Um, it got to the point where me and my brother were so um, involved in travel sports that it took away from his time with the dogs. So ultimately, he had to make a sacrifice, and he sacrificed, you know, his love for the dogs for me and my brothers. So over time, we ended up um, owning a boxer. His name was Ace. Um, loved him to death. That was a crazy experience, just seeing the differences of a you know a new breed. Ace, he was well. His temperament was you know a lot different, and I think that was the biggest difference. Um, having a dog that can you know just be right there next to your side and go anywhere with you, even when people come over, you don't have to worry about you know hey to make sure you put, put my dog up or. You know, that intimidating factor of when people come inside, and, you know, they see a rock while they, you know, a little bit more skeptical. Um, I think that was the biggest difference was just definitely the temperament um, of the two dogs. I wanted a rock. Um, to me, that's like going back home. You know, you live in a lot of different places, but, you know, it's nowhere like home. So the rock wall, the rock wall was definitely like home to me. So I knew I wanted a rock. Um, I mean, only even people that I knew was you know, people from in Dallas area that I seen, you know, online and whatnot, but I really didn't know anyone who had rots. Um, I really just started off from scratch, went to Craigslist, I went to Facebook looking for, you know, a Rottweiler. I knew I wanted a nice Rotty. Um, didn't know everything that I knew now as far as, you know, pedigrees and registration. So my first rot ended up being a female. Her name was Jojo. Um, Jojo was my firstborn. She, she, that was a learning experience. Um, she really helped me learn everything and a lot that I know now. Um, Jojo didn't even have, she wasn't even registered. I wasn't even worried about that at the time. I just wanted me a nice rock um, that I could have, you know, right there with me every day. I actually ended up finding Jojo on Facebook. Um, I had a guy that I went to school with back in East Texas and his family was breeding. Um, at the time, so I had kind of reached out to him and he sent me some pictures and some videos and told me, you know, I could come check him out. So I ended up going out to Mount, back to, uh, back to Mount Pleasant to go check him out. And I mean, once I got out there, um, I, I liked what I saw. 
Um, like I said, at the time, I didn't know everything that I know now. So, you know, I'm thinking, hey, I, I like these dogs. I like what I see. I like the price. So I went ahead and purchased, purchased her, um, brought her back to college with me. Joining some of the Rottweiler groups on Facebook definitely was eye-opening for me. Um, that kind of showed me how far behind I was. And, you know, me thinking that, you know, I went out and got me, you know, a nice female rot. Um, even though she didn't have paper, she definitely had a nice look to her. Um, I definitely see, you know, these, the imports, you know, have, you know, kind of particular look. But I was real pleased with her look. It was just more so my knowledge wasn't where it needed to be. And being in those groups and seeing, you know, breeders talk and seeing buyers ask certain questions really fueled my, you know, my hunger to learn. And once I saw how far behind I was, that really just motivated me to, you know, learn and learn and learn. I reached out as much as I could. Um, I mean, I would just engage and take part of people's conversations just to see what was going on. Anytime I seen somebody talking about something that I didn't know, I went and Googled it. And that really, you know, showed me that, you know, it's levels to the dog game and I wasn't where, you know, I needed to be yet. And, you know, I, I needed to upgrade. I knew I wanted um, to continue my breeding, um, but I knew that I wasn't going to be able to continue with JoJo. Um, like I said, just learning you know, about registration and paperwork, you know, I knew that she wasn't the best quality to continue breeding. So I went out and I purchased two females. Um, they were actually born here in Texas. They were littermate sisters, Zoe and Nova. Um, they come from the Von House Keegan pedigree. They have Carlos in their um, pedigree. They also have um, the champion Asteroid in their pedigree. Um, Una Von House Keegan is in their pedigree. So, you know, just after doing, you know, all this research, I knew that, you know, I felt like this was a great pedigree that I was interested in. So I went ahead and purchased both of them at the same time. Um, that was definitely a learning experience just far as I felt like I was kind of evolving with the dog aspect, but it was the business aspect and knowing what to ask breeders and, you know, knowing what to look for was definitely the learning lesson with my females. Um, that process actually ended up getting dragged out with the breeder and how he conducted business, um, which, you know, was definitely a learning lesson in showing me how I wanted to conduct business and how I didn't want to conduct business. Um, after I purchased my females about a year and a half later, um, as, you know, coming up on time when, you know, they would be getting ready to breed, um, I knew it was time to, to start searching for a male. Had no idea who I wanted to use as a male. Um, at the time, I was thinking about just paying somebody a stud fee. Um, but as I started, you know, doing a little research and trying to look for a male shopping around, um, I started looking at, you know, imports. Um, as I started looking at imports, you know, me going from a situation where I had a, a kind of a bad deal from a breeder here in Texas, it kind of, you know, made me a little distrusting of other breeders, especially, you know, people, you know, that was overseas. And that's when I came across Simona. I'm on Facebook, you know, just checking out the, the Rottweiler groups and, you know, seeing what's out there. And I'm scrolling and I see this video of a male. Um, and I mean, right off the bat, it was just, he just stood out. I mean, his head was super nice. Um, his coat and body was nice. I mean, he was just, he just really stood out to me. Um, I mean, I, like I said, the, the Rottweiler groups has a lot of dogs, but he just stood out. So. I noticed that she had posted it maybe, it said like 18 hours ago. It wasn't even that long. So I immediately reached out to Simona and to see, you know, is, was he still available? Um, she told me he was still available. So I started asking, you know, some more questions about his pedigree. Um, I immediately started researching the dogs in his pedigree. And I mean, I was just blown away. Um, I mean, I couldn't even believe that he was still available. And then, you know, it was, so crazy to the point where I asked her, like, man, why do you still have this dog available? And she told me that she was he was a keeper pup. Um, and now that she wanted to go ahead and rehome him. So I think I purchased him the very next day. So he wasn't even on the market for two days before I went ahead and got him. I won't say anything really came easy. Um, I mean, nothing at all. I, I didn't really have a lot of people to reach out to and ask a lot of questions to. A lot of people really wasn't, you know, trying to help um, in, a, in a sense. Um, I mean, anybody, Simona, you know, she, she put me on game about so much. Um, but all in all, I mean, I knew that, you know, I was building a brand. 
things were starting to take off and I knew things were starting to take off because people start reaching out to me. You know, here I am being the one reaching out to everybody else, trying to soak up all this knowledge I can. And now I have people reaching out to me, asking me for, you know, advice, asking me for information, you know, and it was like, man, I really don't know the answer to your question, you know, but people felt, felt like I would be the one to know. So that kind of let me know, like, man, you know, you need to stay on it and, you know, keep grinding. Um, everywhere I took Macho, people, you know, complimented him, wanted to know where I got him from. So as I was building my brand, it really started showing me at the time, because I had a full-time job, that, you know, if I wanted to get into this and I wanted to be as serious as, you know, some of these other other breeders that I, you know, look up to, like Art Park Forest, that I'm going to have to find a way to dedicate more time to my dogs. You know, working a nine to five and coming home wasn't enough time with the dogs. So that's why, you know, I've said, hey man, well, I need a facility. You know, if I can find a way to, you know, have a job as uh, having a facility that, that would give me the time that I needed with my dogs. So one thing led to another. Um, I can't say I did anything alone. I mean, my family was super supportive. Um, my girl was super supportive. My mother was super supportive. Um, and I mean, once, once, I, once one thing took off, it really started taking off. So it got to the point where I have one daycare and training facility. We're in the process of opening up another facility that will service daycare, boarding, training, grooming, veterinarian, transportation, events. I mean, anything with dogs, you name it, we have it. Um, but all in all, it's been a big blessing because it gives me the time with my dogs that you know I truly enjoy. I get to take my dogs to work with me every day. If you know we need to put in more work in any aspect, then I get to do it on my time. I don't have to worry about you know calling off or anything like that. So it's definitely been you know a, def a bumpy journey, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Back before I even got my first um, two females that were registered and you know of quality. I was doing my research, you know, trying to get any any information I could, and it really wasn't a lot of information out there. I mean, it was a lot of dog, you know, documentaries and whatnot, but it wasn't really just a lot on just Rottweilers. And then even the ones that was out, it wasn't really a lot out, you know, to talk about all everything that you needed to know. You know what I'm saying? It was just maybe a video of just the dog. So, um, I mean, just from the moment you know I met you, Mike. I mean. You was definitely helpful from day one. You never tried to hold back any information. You know, you never tried to not, you know, give game to anybody. And, you know, I really admired that because that's what I was looking for, you know, when I was going through my research trial with somebody just to, you know, put me on game. Um, and, you know, I see you doing that every single day. You know, I even wonder how you even have time to do this. Um, but as far as the vlogs, man, I've been a fan since the very first one. Um, it's not a lot of people out here doing what you're doing, um, especially, you know, highlighting the Rottweilers. Um, I like to go through the comments sometimes on your YouTube just to see if other people feel the same way about, you know, how I do. And I see, you know, people thanking you, you know, for this content. And when I see that, you know, I be telling myself, yeah, I feel that because you really, you know, giving people, you know, game, you know, that's on a lower level and people on a higher level too, you know, that's another thing that I've learned through this journey is no matter how much time you put in, you're still going to, you know, be able to learn more from somebody, you know, it may be somebody ahead of you, maybe somebody below you, you're still going to be able to learn. Um, I heard you mention one time, you know, that you never look down on, you know, the so-called backyard breeders because that's how everybody started at one point and I respected that from the jump. Because it could have been easy for you know someone not to take me serious since my first breeding was a, you know a female with no papers, but you know just to know that it was somebody out there who felt the same way I felt and was putting in and work the same way I was putting it in, you know it made me fall in love with it. I've been a fan of your vlogs since day one. I'm still a fan. Y'all need to make sure you know go follow all his other um, videos and make sure y'all subscribe to the vlogs. Thanks, man. I appreciate the support. I think you for being on episode 113. Doggy Daycare, downtown Dallas location. Um, our first one, we have another one on the way that'll be much bigger than this one, but this one we have Doggy Daycare and we also do training as well. Um, right here we have our small dog area, which is pretty much, you know, your small breed. We call it the T-ball field. Um, we 
got the bases out and we like to play with play a lot of games with them. Um, on this side, we have the large dog area. Um, we also do some training work on this side also. And back here in the back, we have our medium dog section or sometimes we like to put the, the older dogs back here, the less active dogs back here that really just like to chill, um, lay around. Um, but as you can see, this, this location, nice, small, simple, um, but definitely gets the job done. Very nice, very nice. And what was you guys grand open? Because you guys just opened, right? Yes, sir. We've been open about two weeks at this location. Congratulations. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. You started from being a teacher to now doing this full time. Yeah. How does that feel? Man, it's a blessing. Um, all in all, no matter how long the days are, no matter, you know, how stressful days get, I get to just remind myself that I don't work for anyone. Um, and it's, it's definitely a blessing and it's just crazy experience to see something that, you know, I've thought about and prepared for for so long and now it's actually here, it's come to light. So um, it only makes me, you know, want to keep pushing and keep pushing and I can't wait till our next location opens. CSLC, CSLC, agree or disagree, but it's what it's gonna be. I can never trust you, cause I only trust me. Young Mizzle, Young King, out CSLC, nigga, make a play. These haters hating, cause I made a way. Shit change, and it's safe to say. I'm getting money while you mad, you start putting shit on layaway. You can wear that shit another day. I'm talking CSD, bitch, please, I don't fuck with